Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm Nick Sabluski and I'm here today to break down the National PUBG League for, you know, every, every everybody just to kind of help uh, clarify and explain some things and explain why it's something worth watching and why you should be why you should be watching it and why you should check it out so to start off we're going to go through the intro uh the in-game and round phases so there's schedule in get or s schedule phases which are the weekly tournaments and then there's the matches inside those phases which are singular rounds now the in-game phases which i know there's a lot of phases getting thrown around uh, those are the numbers of times that the, the blue zone has closed in and the, the, the zone changes have happened. So zone four is the smaller zone. Zone one is the first zone that is presented to the players. And uh, now to go into the point system, there are placement points and kill points. Placement points, uh, so... The, the big change since the preseason and other PUBG events is that first place gets 10 points. So if you get the chicken dinner, you get 10 points. Now you may be thinking, they used to be they used to give out 250 points. Why, why are they giving out 10 points now? That's just because that's the change in the meta, which we'll go through later in this video. So first, point get, first place gets 10 points down until 9th through 16th gets zero placement points. Now this creates a need for points and kills are where they're coming from 16 points per kill that is a lot of points that's more than getting a chicken dinner each kill is more than a chicken dinner uh, it creates a truly competitive fight for all the players and instead of it being more of a survival tournament it's creating this this habitat for fights and and trying to get kills which is amazing for the spectators and i love it i think the teams love it uh, most teams that were interviewed after rounds have said that their their game style has their play style has kind of fit into this new meta and such and um now let's get into the settings of the mpl so collectively throughout most of competitive pubg first person has been accepted as the main mode to play competitive PUBG, uh, that's just kind of the preferred way. Uh, so MPL is an FPP. The first two to three zones are faster than public matches, and the last couple zones are a lot slower than than public matches. And this is because they want to speed up the, the early game, which is what I'm going to talk about uh, later in the problems section. But, um, and they also want to slow down to create more methodical fights at the end of the game rather than just everyone running towards the center of the zone and gunning down each other. So there's time to make decisions and try to pick off other teams before the zone starts to close at the end. Uh, another setting that is going on is that the AR and scope spawns are increased. I think it's at 1.25, if I'm not mistaken, maybe 1.5. And uh, this creates a assurance that each player will get whatever weapon that they need for early game mid game and end game situations uh, along with the scopes to take those long range shots and uh, uh, long range shots in the mid game and you know make sure that there's enough ammunition also which is another factor that hasn't been talked about as much um, now to go along with the settings changes uh, there's an evolution of the meta that goes along with the settings changes. And when I say meta, it's kind of like the preferred way of playing the most common settings and, and so on. Um, but even just since preseason, the MPL has changed so much in the settings uh, with the point system, mainly the point system. And uh, I feel like that's just going to be a continuing thing that they kind of change it up every once in a while. PUBG is still a new eSport and uh, you never know what is the perfect settings and they're going to keep tweaking it until hopefully they find the perfect settings which I'm not sure if that's a real thing because everyone likes something different but it's uh, there's definitely evolution of the meta and now for the last of the intro uh, there's a new spectator HUD which is HUD and uh, this helps with 
the viewers watching to see exactly what's going on and know what's going on. So uh, it helps to show how much damage is done to players, uh, to enemies from certain teams. Uh, and this is done by showing a number on a hit that a player hits. So if you get hit in the arm, it's like a 12. If you get hit in the chest with a certain kind of vest on, it's 25, something like that. You can see that. So you know exactly how much damage is going through. It's almost like Fortnite. I hate to say it, but it's practically like Fortnite. And you see how much damage you get to do. And there is also a uh, kind of hit mark uh, where you're getting shot from uh, for the players because it is a first-person com uh, competition, but the spectating is in third person. So it's hard to get into the mind of one player when you need to look over the whole team and see where the whole team is. So it's good to see that there's things to help the, the spectator see where shots are coming from and kind of know what's going on uh, rather than just seeing the, the tracers come through. Um, now the, the second part of this video, I'm gonna break through the teams because without the teams there will be no competition. Now, very simple. Uh, again, these are the layman's terms for the whole MPL. I'm not saying that I know the deep in-depth stuff or anything like that, but this is my take to help everyone uh, make the viewability of the MPL a little bit easier. Now, there's roles in each team. There's an in-game leader, usually. There's a leader. There's, a, there's pushers and fraggers, which are the main, like, you know they can really take fights they can really hit shots and then there's snipers in range there's a couple other roles that some teams have but for the most part these are the most common roles now for one example for e united their strats are based on uh the strat to take a building for them is based on geis which is one of their players hitting a sniper shot to knock one of the players and then the rest of the team pushes to take advantage of that 3v4 situation or a 4v4 where the team in the compound has very little health after he got picked up in the time that they push. Uh, definitely puts an upset into the situation and it may even get them uh, wins into buildings and buildings are pretty important in this game as you can see. Uh, even when you're playing, you know that if you're in a building, you're you're pretty much safe. If you're playing out of a building, you may not yield as much kills, but you will yield a higher placement score, which I guess in this meta, it's not as important because kills are high or, or so high in points. But um, it's securing your port, securing your place in the end game to rack up as many kills once you're in those smaller circles. So um, those, those are the roles. Now, some teams, this is another point, some teams do better on Miramar and some teams do better on Arangle. I know that Shoot to Kill STK yields higher placements on Miramar just because they're all about taking shots and there's less buildings on Miramar to, to do that. It's more about you know really getting down and dirty with your shots. And... Uh, in comparison, C9 is always doing great on a wrangle. I know C9 usually does pretty good on any map, but um, you know they're they're always you know top five, top ten in in those situations on a wrangle. And uh, this changes. You know, some teams can have really great days on Miramar and then not do so good the next day. But for the most part, some teams are better on certain maps. Now, with the teams comes designated drops. Uh, C9 always drops on Pochinki and Picado. There's teams that they know exactly where they're going to drop, and usually there's no contestion for that. I know C9 always gets Pochinki and Picado. There's no one really there to try and fight them. Uh, and then people have their designated drops that they like to go for early game to loot up and have enough buildings to really prepare themselves for the rest of the game. And this goes in with the meta. <clears throat> NV used to be a team that always dropped at the military base. That was always their drop. They'd fly out, they'd find a vehicle, and they'd drive to the military base. But there's been a change in their in their strategies that they don't go to military base anymore, unless like there's a plane right on it and they expect a zone to be on it. 
um, which, you know, with the zones mainly coming onto the mainland, uh, those bridges are scary for them. And they lost a lot of good games just from trying to get across those bridges. And, uh, you know, the last part for teams is that each of these teams are incredibly skilled. They can kill, they can get the wins. Every team can win every single round. It just depends where the zones are and, you know, what's going on because every team kind of has the same amount of loot, the same kind of loot. It's not like they're running into a last zone with a shotgun. They, they, for the most part, have their preferred weapons. And I think this is a great transition to go into the problems with PUBG. Uh, this may not be the most important problem, but I think it was a good transition to go from the team skill into um, one of the problems with the spectating of PUBG and MPL is that every team is so good, so it's hard to gravitate towards a team. You're, you're not, it, instead of like a CSGO where you know that phase has strats that they're going to pull and that they're most likely going to win around or something like that um you know every team is really good so it's hard to pick that team and, and stick with them so i think that's a problem that will be overcome throughout the mpl season just from people finding a team that they really like and that have been doing really good or putting up a lot of kills and sticking with that team um so we'll see how that goes uh, the second problem is the format of PUBG. Again, Battle Royale in esports is kind of a new thing, and it's just very slow in the early game. And that's something that we got to get over. We need to figure out a way to appreciate the early game situations where we kind of dial in to teams and see, kind of give more importance to the looting phase to see what kind of guns teams are getting. I think that was a missed part of the uh, phase one that. I was watching this weekend um it kind of just came out dry and i think that's a, a good way to overcome that is try to build narratives around certain players with certain weapons like k -Mine with his m4 he can tear up a whole team with that guys with a car 98 something like that um to kind of build narrative and to keep viewers interested in um in the game uh, now, another part of the format is that there's not a lot of huge plays where the players stand up at their desk after a round um, because they hit an insane headshot to clutch the round, anything like that. It's more drawn out, and, you know, whereas in CSGO, you win a round, you're out of your desk running around. You can do that because you have the ability to, whereas in this situation, in PUBG, if you get a kill on a team, you can't really celebrate all that much. You got to be ready for the next team that's third partying you to come take advantage and, and try to defend off of that because that's kind of one of the metas that we, we say that happens in PUBG is that third partying because you're giving off so much noise and information from taking fights that people are going to come over and check and they're going to see if you're hurt and if you're hurt, they're going to take advantage of that. So. There's not enough time to kind of celebrate. Uh, not to say that there are times to celebrate. Uh, phase one this weekend with day two, match four, uh, the K mine clutch on Arango coming out of that hut or uh, out of that trough, getting blues, uh, blue zone damage, almost down to half health with no cover. And the other team had the hay bale. He just hit those shots so perfectly. I jumped out of my seat. I was screaming. I was running around my house. I wasn't even in the stadium. And I was so hyped. So there are those precious times where you can really get into it and, and cheer for a team. But it's at a smaller rate than a normal uh, esports uh, esport, I guess. <laughs> and uh, now the game is pub the game of PUBG is very zone dependent. Uh, where you know if you're not getting zones whereas in comparison to a team getting zones every round uh like in the preseason uh day one i think it was group a versus d smoke and aces had that compound north of georgia pool and they got the zone every single round and they won the round 
as a result of that. They didn't get many kills, so they didn't get first for the first round. But, you know, they got the chicken dinner. They, they established themselves as winners in the first game. And that definitely helped them throughout the rest of the tournament. And, uh, you know, I think this, this zone dependency is a, a spawn of impeccable strategy knowing that some teams may have to take their vehicles outside into the blue to cross a different bridge so they don't get caught in a choke point. It's, it's you know, that in-game leader usually gets a, a huge role for that. And uh, that's, that's their job to make those decisions to take a little bit extra health damage just to, you know, save themselves for later in the game. Now, um, that's not always a bad thing. Because this also creates a lot of drama at the same time. Seeing your favorite team not get the zone creates some emotion that, you know, dang, like, come on, why, why couldn't, you know, the certain team get inside the zone again and wouldn't have to run around the, the edges and try to take fights and get picked off? Um, it's just something that happens with PUBG. But I think that, that drama is something that's, that's good for the MPL. Um, and overall, they can, over, they can work through uh, the zone dependency of PUBG and make it more intriguing to the viewers and spectators of the MPL. Now, another problem is that there's a problem with the client-side observation lag. Now, I had to really think about all the words to, to write this down and, and make sure that I, I kind of Put a good name to it but when you're watching and you see a vehicle rolling by a team taking shots at it those tracer uh, bullets the tracers aren't really showing up like they're hitting the vehicle they look 10 feet away and you're saying oh, this guy sucks why why is he missing those shots those are easy shots but you know that's just the client side uh, lag between the client and the server and uh, that's something that's that's on the PUBG side that's not MPL that's PUBG, and I think um, once PUBG gets that cleaned up, you know, it'll be a lot easier to watch. Um, now, the future map choices. Right now, it's Arangel and Miramar, and some people don't like Miramar, and I see that being a problem for spectators to see the pros play on Miramar. They may not retain uh, as many viewers at that time to watch that map get played. Um, I think Sandhawk may not ever get the potential to be on uh, MPL rotation for PUBG, but, you know, just because there's not enough buildings, big buildings, big compounds for teams to go to, um, it kind of, it's, it's a completely different game than public matches. So, you know, we'll work around that. I think Vikendi has a very good potential for that, though, because that was the most, well, to me, that was the most well thought out map of where buildings are, where cover is, how much cover there is. It just a beautiful map, and I, I hope to see Vikendi in the rotation soon enough. And uh, the last two things, uh, as I said before, there's just a problem with the early game and looting phases of uh, of designated drops in in the early games of of MPL and PUBG. Uh, it really slows down those first two to three minutes. Uh, whereas when you jump into a public game, you're going to drop in Pochinki with with other people, with other teams. And uh, this kind of dries it out. It's it's there, There's not as much early war. It's more methodically think it, thought, thought about. And um, it kind of, we need to find a way to appreciate the early game, as I said before. Um, I know that they have done the zone changes. Uh, to try and fix that and try to make it so that the early phases of the game kind of go a little bit faster. But uh, other than that, I don't see much of ways to get around the boring, boring early game uh, besides, you know, maybe putting that narrative to certain players with certain weapons that, they, that they're that they looting. Um, and now for the last part, uh, i just like to say phase one, like week one, of the MPL only got like 22,000 live viewers per uh, per day. And it's it's sad to see such a small turnout for something that's so great and that they've put a lot of money into with OGM. 
uh, creating this and, and putting so much money into the stage, the playing, paying even for people, the, the players' hotels, the team's hotels. Um, there's so much into it that it's sad to see that there's not as much of a turnout through the viewers. But, you know, hopefully that'll change in the next couple of days. And I hope that this video will help you understand kind of the importance of this and see that it's a it's pretty fun to watch. Uh, I know as a PUBG player, sometimes it can be hard to watch, and I can see that not being a PUBG player it could be very hard to watch at times. But, you know, overall it's PvP. You get to see teams taking out teams. You get to see little uh, computer creatures kill other computer creatures, and it's fun to watch. Um, so I just hope that this video helps with that, and I'd like to thank you. Uh, thank everyone for watching this, and hopefully I'll see you in my upcoming videos. Hopefully I'll be doing more NPL coverage and uh, OGN. Um, you know, I'm looking for an internship or a job. I, you know, it's it's I'm, I'm here. I'm a marketing student. I uh, I would I would gladly take any internship that you can that you can spare if you would. But um, and all, all jokes aside, um, I just just want to say thank you. Um, I'm glad that the NPL is a thing. It's something that spiced up the PUBG scene since, you know, not having really any tournaments for the first two years of the game. And uh, I'm glad to see that there is an effort to create a North American PUBG scene. And, uh, you know, I hope everyone enjoyed this video. I hope I see you guys very soon. And I will see you guys in the next one.